Generatopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by IVPN. Use a VPN to help prevent your online activity from becoming a permanent record. IVPN encrypts your data and DNS requests so your ISP or mobile network provider cannot monitor or log your online activity. Purchase an IVPN service today anonymously with Monero. Okay. Uh, first story of the day. Urgent. The Argent. Time Central Bank has just suspended operations for today and Monday. Farm payments have been suspended. There are no more dollars in the system. Uh, is this true, guys? <laughs> I mean, I, I saw somebody tweet about this. This sounds pretty crazy. Um, looks like the central bank was effectively already dipping into customer USD deposits at local banks. This was last month and it only got worse since then. So there's this interesting thread that Bowtie Mara put out about the Argentine central bank suspending operations for today and Monday because they basically ran out of dollars. Uh, he posts a video, but I believe it's in Spanish, so I'm not going to play that. Uh, the central bank will now also force companies to inform the, uh, the central bank two days in advance of all purchases over USD $10,000. Wow. So their companies are gonna have to notify the central bank when they're making uh purchase uh purchases over 10 grand this is this is just crazy i mean it's just a sign of you know fiat gone bad we all know things are severely screwed up in argentina it's actually the perfect location for organic adoption of crypto to take place and we've talked about that on the show for quite a few times there's some strong crypto monero advocates in in Argentina that are in, you know, that are in the Monero community and have talked about this and talked about how they're seeing organic adoption in Argentina for these reasons, people uh, using crypto literally out of a need, right? Especially those that need to get money in and out of the country uh, are using crypto for those purposes. So this is an interesting story, uh, fiat at its worst. And Argentina is just one example of where it's happening. Inevitably, uh, as we know the story goes, this is how fiat ends. Untraceable put out a tweet. In the past two days, Matt Crater made two videos focusing on Monero. NVK tweeted about Monero six separate times. And I read the sentence, don't they fork every six months, LOL, more times than I count. Uh, self describe big Bitcoin maxis, yet their focus is Monero. I wonder why. Yeah, untraceable is a good point. I, I've noticed that this week as well. Uh, there's been a lot of like FUD against Monero this week coming out of the Bitcoin camp, coming from the BTC maxis. Uh, this guy, Matt Crater, put out this video, uh, attacking Bitcoin ASIC resistance, saying ASIC resistance is silly. Uh, he made a video, um, and then Howard Chu tore him apart. Highly recommend reading that thread if you, you know, if you're if you don't fully understand what Monero's ASIC resistance is all about and the point. Uh, that's a great thread to check out. Howard explains it to to Matt, and then Matt responded with putting out a second video the day after, where he then pivoted, and so no longer attacking Monero for its ASIC resistant algorithm after Howard Chu explained to him uh, why all his, uh, how all of his criticisms basically didn't make any sense. He then shifted to attack Monero because of its uh, quote unquote uh, bloat and that it can't scale. So Monero's big fat problem, he has a video about how Monero can't scale. We've all heard this FUD before. Uh, he's, you know, ignoring uh basically nielsen's law he's ignoring the fact that you know um technology is improving over time the the stats that we've seen how bandwidth has increased bandwidth technology has increased something like uh five times since uh the concerns first came up in bitcoin in 2015 and how hardware has increased something like 10 times or i might be getting those stats uh mixed five and ten uh but you know he, he ignores all these things he ignores the fact that uh comparing bitcoin to monero apples to apples uh monero is arguably has less bloat right so if you're trying to use bitcoin monero transactions sure might be four times larger than bitcoins 
But if you're actually trying to use Bitcoin in a default fungible way, where everybody's using it in a default private way, uh, you effectively have to do a lot more transactions. And at that point, uh, are you are you really uh, more efficient than Monero in terms of your size? Probably not. Uh, there's so many different ways to look at it. And just the fact, just the fact that he's kind of like pinpointed this and declared it to be a, um, you know, a fatal flaw. It just shows that, you know, guy hasn't done his research, claiming that people can't run Monero nodes. When we all know how easy it is to run a Monero node, people can do it with their with their hardware at home. Does it take up some space? Sure, it does. Same with Bitcoin nodes. Uh, he's claiming basically that because uh, Monero's market cap is so low that it's insignificant that nobody uses it. He compared it to a food snack company saying Monero is no more significant than a food snack company because it only has a market cap of whatever, $2 million, whatever it is, completely ignoring the fact that Bitcoin at one point had a market cap of 2 billion not not too long ago guys i think even as, as early as 2014 at some point it it did it, it hit the the very low billions 2 billion you know uh, similar similar in size to monero and uh those who've been around know that like those criticisms used to be made against bitcoin so for this guy to kind of portray himself as some old school bitcoiner I think he calls his his podcast is called like the Bitcoin Education Podcast or something. Uh, it seems like he needs to go back and and do some more educating of of himself before he goes out and teaches others. Uh, next story: Belarus to decide on issuing CBDC by year's end. National Bank Chair. Just, just more of the same uh, same weekly stories we're seeing on CBDC is just growing throughout the world. The National Bank of the Republic of Belarus has prepared a pilot program for a central bank digital currency. According to the office of uh, BEITA news agency, the country will make a decision on the issuance of a digital Belarusian ruble by the end of the year. So they're moving fast. They're thinking about issuing a digital ruble, basically CBDC. If the project goes ahead with creating the Belarusian CBCDC, there will be a pilot program that will experiment with a narrow range of participants. Um, so yeah, Belarus is getting in on the action. Crowler called CBDC a third form of money and said that a digital ruble would be much like other forms of non-cash money. So things that you know aren't physical and I guess not private by nature, but available offline as well as online. Cross-border payment is the most interesting technology for us, he said. If other countries introduce digital currency, we should be ready to hook up our systems so our citizens and companies have a high level of service. Doesn't that sound nice, guys? So everybody, we have their own CBDC, no matter what country they're in, and then all these, they can all interoperate through one, one lar large centralized uh central bank that's why that's uh connecting them all together and it would be, it would add so much efficiency and security to your life i'm being uh ironic here and sarcastic uh we all know the dangers of cbdc's and how it can be used as a, a perfect tool for surveillance and potentially censorship and just being able to program everybody's money and how they use it in the entire world, all, all the states around the world are, are are moving towards it. UK, next door, UK may have crypto regulation within a year. So the UK has woken up to crypto. Obviously, they've you know, been well aware of it for quite some time, but now they're talking about making some big moves in the regulation space. The United States Kingdom could lay out digital asset regulation within 12 months, a British lawmaker claimed, saying the country wants to capitalize on the benefits that blockchain can bring to the private sector. Do, do, do. For the first time in decades, Griffith claimed the UK government is now well positioned to, to regulate crypto in a pragmatic and proportionate manner. Um, let's see. He also appeared to make reference to the UK's exit from the European Union. Let's see if there's any anything any anything juicy in here. Uh, hmm. 
Whenever possible, we want to see the same asset regulated in the same way, but there are some additional opportunities in the crypto asset distribution. Da, da, da. He cited settlement. Uh... Griffith said a potential rollout of the UK's proposed central bank digital current currency nicknamed Bitcoin by the public has a much longer lead time. So the, so in the UK, at least, they're saying they're, they're kind of CBDCs aren't right around the corner, right? So here they're just talking about upping crypto regulation, but not so much CBDCs and not ready for that. Griffith added he wants to see a policy debate regarding privacy and the technology of the digital pound thrashed out to ensure that all concerns are addressed. Okay, so you know we've we've heard this story before, right? Um, so large state looking to implement CBDC, but they're concerned that CBDC won't provide base level privacy to their citizens. Uh, so this this is good. This is all this is good for for society and ultimately good for Monero that this this is part of the narrative, right? That politically speaking, there are there are those out there that are realizing what a CBDC what a CBDC can do in terms of infringing people's privacy, and so it's becoming part of the mainstream conversation. Um, hopefully, you know these conversations lead to people realizing we need something like a Monero, right, which is in a CBDC and uh, guarantees people's privacy in code. Uh, Brian Armstrong, the CEO of crypto exchange Coinbase, met with Griffin early this week while I was in London to give a speech on how the UK could turbocharge its crypto sector and ultimately become an innovation hub for Web3 economy. Coinbase's crypto hub aspirations for Britain are in line with the views of the Prime Minister Rishi, who explained last year while serving as Prime So they're they're you know teaming up with Coinbase here. It seems like Dubai, Singapore, and recently Hong Kong are some regions that have made pushes to become crypto hubs. The United States, on the other hand, has considerably stepped up crypto related enforcement actions since Gary Gensler was sworn in as chair of the Security Exchange Commission. Uh, yeah, that's a story. I don't think we have on here. Uh, Gary, yeah, there was the um, SEC was uh, in front of Congress. I think it was this week. It's all a blur, guys. Got a lot going on. Uh, but he was, there's some good videos out there of him being asked some seemingly simple questions considering his expertise in the field. And he he was not able to answer whether or not ethereum was a security he basically refused to to give an answer to the question he said with confidence before that bitcoin is not a security uh, but he was unable to apply the same logic that he applied to bitcoin to to make a determination whether or not something like a ethereum is a security which is which is really interesting. That's a whole nother story. Uh, next story: What countries are buying the most Monero? So Cake Wallet recently added uh, this service called Payfura, which allows you to buy Monero. Uh, I think even with your with your bank account. Um, I'm I'm a little behind on this as well. So it's a, it's a payment gateway uh, that's integrated into. It, that coin uh, cake wallet recently integrated so it just becomes another on-ramp for monero so you can use fiat to purchase monero through cake using payfura and they're getting some data from payfura to see how they're you know how users are using it so which countries are buying the most monero and sweden is is it almost 40 percent is coming out of sweden so that, that's interesting um uh, who's the second biggest united kingdom and then Switzerland. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, and then I'm looking through the comments. We have some people criticizing why they even, I guess, posting this data. I mean, this isn't, you know, this isn't cake, right? So, like, if you want to use cake in a, in a secure way, obviously not I'm not saying that this isn't secure, but in kind of your most privacy preserving way, yeah, purchase your Monero with cash. Go go use local Monero or you know purchase some other crypto and swap it into Monero in, in, in non KYC AML ways, and then store your your crypto on your Monero on Cake using something like Payfura. Um, you know, it's I, I don't know what their their KYC AML uh, looks like, um, but yeah. You're you're using Payfura at that point, integrated into Cake. So this isn't isn't Cake tracking people's data and figuring out where 
where people are, are, you know, what countries are using Monero the most. This is them taking data from Payfura, where people are using it for those purposes to buy Monero. So I, I don't know. I don't think we should really be critical of that. You, like, you don't have to use Payfura, but expect that they're going to be collecting that data. Um, next story, Cake Wallet integrated with IVPN. Oh, so they're using IVPN, one of the most respected uh, VPNs, Providers now uses Cake Labs pricing API to accept Monero. So we already knew IVPN is accepting Monero, but now they're using Cake's pricing API. That's cool. They have a pricing API, so it makes it uh, easier for people that are uh, selling things for Monero to, I guess, essentially list the correct XMR to USD price. But yeah, just a reminder, IVPN is a great VPN. We use it. Um, we've purchased the service with Monero. It's super easy. They don't ask for any information. Uh, I think just just an email. I think maybe there's a way even without an email. It was like bare bones, no info required. Uh, and you can pay directly with Monero and you're up and running with the VPN service. So super awesome. And they will be at Monerotopia, part of the adoption alley. Uh, we're big fans of IPN. Happy ninth Monero anniversary! Monero launched nine years ago on April eighteenth, twenty fourteen. So we did a we did a show on that this week. We had a little Monero birthday show. We all know it was Monero's birthday. And last article: chain analysis on Monero's birthday actually put out an article: privacy coins one hundred one and anonymity enhanced cryptocurrencies. And it's just like a little little blog about what chain analysis thinks about uh, privacy coins. Blockchain technology it has introduced a new era of financial transparency in a cryptocurrency ecosystem where transactions and wallet balances are permanently recorded and publicly visible. Visible participants are able to interact with increased trust and without the need for inter intermediaries. These features boost network security and can also facilitate investigation of stolen funds which chain analysis just loves transaction analysis and identity discovery however not all black blockchains are transparent privacy coins are the major major exception so it goes into privacy coins what are privacy coins how do privacy coins work and then they actually quote some of the technology that monero uses stealth addresses ring signatures they mention uh the tech that zcash is using zero knowledge uh Z zk snarks uh what are the most well known and uh this is where monero really shines right they real they really point monero as being you know they're, they're honest here um they point Monero as being the top dog. Uh, they mentioned how it's the only crypto that's private by default. And then they go ahead and show a comparison chart of Bitcoin to Monero transactions. And kind of in a way, where, you know, they're, they're showing how, uh, you know, uh, it's obviously there's a lot less Monero transactions than BTC transactions, but showing the general uptrend, uh, how Monero is, is gaining, right, in amount of transactions versus Bitcoin over time. More and more people are using privacy coins. And then they go ahead and list the top 15 privacy coins. And some of these, so Monero, number one, uh, then Zcash, then Dash. I thought Dash even made an announcement like not too long, like a year or so ago when there was uh, coins were being delisted for being privacy coins. They came out and said, we are not a privacy coin, but... For some reason, the number three on this list, and then it just like continues with like like Decred. Uh, I I don't know how they could be considered a privacy coin at, at all. Decred, obviously, will actually be participating at Monerotopia because uh, there's there's a little bit of a of a community down there in Mexico City, and uh, we've been getting a lot of help from the guy who runs the Decred community down there. So he's going to have a table down there. I mean, Decred is focused on like. Uh, decentralized governance and things like that. They're not. They're not focused on privacy at all. And for some reason, uh, chain analysis has them as like in the top five of, of privacy coins. Uh, mobile coin. What? Horizon. Keep network. Never even heard of that one, guys. Secret status. I don't know what that is. Darrow's on there, way at the bottom. Uh, Nim and Fala network. Nim, I assume that's Nim. Nim will be at the conference. Nim is, you know, kind of another version of, of Tor. Uh, but yeah, just th their list is just bizarre of their top 15 privacy coins. It's just kind of kind of bizarre. Uh, privacy coin use cases. So this is cool. They kind of give some like deference to the 
importance of privacy coins like oh because it reduces authoritarian financial control yeah guys that's kind of why crypto was invented um i guess the chain the guy people behind chain analysis don't really understand the value prop of of crypto protecting sensitive information so they you know they are saying that there are some use coins and then they go into talking about the bans and how privacy coins are Legal in the United States, but other major world economies have imposed restrictions in an effort to curb money laundering and reduce organized crime. Japan banned privacy coins in 2018. I remember that, guys. South Korea and Australia followed suit, delisting Monero, Dash, Zcoy, Zcash, and other coins from exchanges. Dubai, I guess you guys should all remember that, was recently, is the latest current count country to join this list in 2023 they banned they banned monero with other jurisdictions such as the european union considering bans and then they say a leaked draft of of a proposed money laundering bill written by the eu stated that credit institutions financial institutions and crypto asset service providers shall be prohibited from keeping anonymity enhancing coins so there's this leaked draft um that uh talks about how the eu is moving towards essentially trying to ban privacy coins as well we're talking about that quite a bit on the show um several mainstream exchanges have also stopped offering privacy coins and now they're talking about the exchanges that have booted monero bitrex uh kraken delisted monero in the uk so all kind of all the doom and gloom and then they're talking about the future of privacy coins. This is just funny. So that so this whole thing ends. The, the conclusion is, guys, from chain analysis is, as the cryptocurrency ecosystem advances, we will continue to see tokens with diverse use cases and characteristics. Thus far, privacy coins have challenged traditional blockchains by providing means of transacting with the greater anonymity and flexibility, but have also raised questions about transparency and trust. To maintain a safe cryptocurrency ecosystem, neither full transparency nor total anonymity is ideal. So their conclusion is that uh, privacy coins like Monero, or really they're just pinpointing only Monero, right? Because earlier in the article, they said how Monero is the only crypto that is default private. They're basically saying privacy is good. It's a nice to have, um, you know, if you can opt into it, but it shouldn't be the default. To maintain a safe cryptocurrency ecosystem, neither full transparency nor full anonymity is ideal. Regulators require appropriate levels of legal authority and oversight to reduce malicious activities and protect for participants, whether with privacy coins or other cryptocurrencies. At the same time, businesses require tools like tackle to tackle illicit activities so same basically saying businesses require chain and out they need to hire chain analysis because it's required to tackle illicit activities and preserve sensitive information so their conclusion is bitcoin represents a balance between the two promoting privacy and financial freedom while offering enough transparency to prevent abuse and bad actors so not surprised that this is the conclusion that a company that's in the business of analyzing blockchain data to conclude that we need blockchains that allow us to analyze their data. Um, so obviously, I think everybody listening here knows that's complete horseshit. We need, <laughs> we, we, what we need is a default private coin, which, you know, they didn't even discuss the concept of fungibility. They don't even get into all that. But in, in their world, in their in their perfect world, we have a coin that is perfectly transparent where you could opt into privacy as needed and it gives regulators enough to analyze you know enough info that they need to keep us all safe uh, but somehow uh, it uh, prevents people from being surveilled and tracked and traced and we all know that's not the case you can't you can only have a one way or the other guess uh, and that is the news, which I think is pretty good considering I didn't read the news beforehand. I just did that on Look the spot. Look at that. So that was pretty good. So I learned some things as well. Hope you guys did.